Here's the final video on radiation, in this case a three-body problem, and uh, so far we have been working with two objects, so one and two. Taking a third one into consideration really complicates the situation uh, quite a bit, and we will start with two, both two objects and then move on to a third one to understand how much more has to be considered and how it's going to be solved. The learning approach would be that you take this as a, uh, a reference to solve in the future multi-object uh, problems and also understand how the uh, easy going assumptions help in solve the problem. What do I mean by easy going assumptions? Well, you see that all the objects that I'm considering are considered to be black radiators. The situation here is as follows. I have charcoal which is flowing. There is something that's going to be grilled. And of course, then the charcoal has a much higher temperature than the grilled object. There's geometrical considerations that are taken care of by a few factor and have radiative exchange between one and two. The uh, procedure to solve that is I need one LNG balance. I do that either around the grilled object or the charcoal. I need to define both of the surface brightnesses and I need to determine a relevant few factor. I can determine this by geometrical considerations as we have done it in our few factor video, or I can make use of this diagram which is in the lecture notes and then uh, go into the graph and determine the few factor from there. Now let's move forward to see what happens if I take a third object into consideration. If this is ambient, so let's say ambient air, well then theoretically I have a radiative exchange between one and two, and I have exchange between one and ambience and ambience and two. But uh, if the ambience is not affected by this radiation, then the situation for one and two does not change. And uh, one grill that would uh, perform like that would be something like this with a hanging grid and uh, nothing big uh, and solid around so that the ambience is more or less ambient there. And uh, the next thing would be, well now let's take real solid walls into consideration. So that's now a real uh, object. I call it W for wall. And uh, the situation is now I have now radiation transfer between the charcoal and the wall as well as between the grilled object and the wall. All of these radiate black. The wall is considered to be adiabatic by the towards the back and this means all the radiation that the wall receives is absorbed and then again emitted and this determines at the end the wall temperature. The Charcoal having the higher temperature as compared to the object will provide more radiation to the wall than the grilled object. The wall itself is in geometrical terms behaving symmetric towards the grilled object and the charcoal. And uh, the higher temperature of the charcoal causes the heat to flow here from the wall. Sorry, there's an artifact that comes into play. Let me try this again and see if I can get rid of this. So this is like playing a snooker ball over rail. I get uh, radiation from the charcoal to the wall going to the grilled object. Depends of course on the reflectivity of the wall. Now let's move forward and uh, have a look at real objects. There is a grill that behaves like that and uh, this image of the cutaway grill and then put into operation is from an interesting book and uh, I've, and this book is Modernist Key Sin has been published by Taschen Editors and the author is uh, Nathan Meyerwald and a few other uh, people. I acquired this book some years ago. It has two and a half thousand pages. It weighs 23 kilograms and is more than wealth of information. This is really, it's the book when we consider everything around cooking, preparation of food and so on. 
So you see there are interesting figures and pictures here and I will make use of that also in this video. Now let's move forward. Uh, three object problem. I'll start with uh, surface brightness and hue factors. And uh, I need a balance around the grill object. I need a balance around charcoal, around the wall. Well, I'm lucky, I only need two out of the, the three. However, I have to define all the surface brightnesses. The charcoal will depend on its temperature, on uh, the uh, surface brightnesses from the other two objects, the grill body, its own temperature, surface brightness on the other objects, the wall. Temperature of the wall is not known. I assume to know the temperatures of the charcoal and the grilled object, but the wall temperature is unknown. That's why I marked it in red. I need to define all the few factors and then I can solve it. Well, let's start with a simpler two body problem, two object problem. Assumptions the wall goes away. I have again all objects radiating black and I know the temperatures as I said. Well, then the procedure is my radiative exchange, as we have done it, is q.1 to 2, that's q.1 to 2 minus q.2 to 1. Well, that, using also the reciprocal rule for the few factors, gives me a solution, which is then a area times phi 1, 2. And as I'm dealing with black bodies, let me just... Uh, Take the laser pointer again. This here is a black body radiation object one, black body radiation object two. So I can put sigma times temperature by the power of four. It's just possible because I assume that the stuff radiates black. Now let's take the wall into consideration. So charcoal, grilled object, wall. The first energy balance around the charcoal would be that there is exchange to the grilled object and exchange to the wall. And I'm considering the wall as one object, so all around. And uh, if I put that in, well, then this is uh, the exchange one to two, plus I have here a few factor for the wall, and I have the unknown wall temperature in this one. The second balance then will consider the wall, and the wall does exchange radiation with itself. This arrow is not shown. <laughs> Excuse me, I will explain in a second why. Exchange with the charcoal, exchange with the grilled object. Well, the exchange with itself, when I assume that these are all black objects, there will be no reflection. And uh, this q dot wall wall is only there if I have reflection. So this goes out. Lucky I got rid of uh, a term that complicates stuff a lot. So now let's put in the formula. I have here a few factor wall to charcoal, the area of the wall, few factor of wall to grilled object, the unknown wall temperature, the known temperature of one, the unknown wall temperature, known temperature of two. Now I can make use of the reciprocal rule because uh, one to the wall and two to the wall, I <coughs> can evaluate. So at the end, I get an equation which I can then uh, solve for the unknown wall temperature. And uh, this unknown wall temperature then will just take uh, the pen again. So this stuff goes in here. Notice then I have a term with T1 by the power of 4, T2 by the power of 4. So I get then a lengthy expression, putting sigma T1 by the power of 4 in front. Then I get a lengthy expression just containing few factors and the same for T2. I can uh, put some stuff here together. And uh, you see that I have here uh, exactly the same term in there. So let's sort these things out and then I get an expression where A1 sigma 
t1 by the power of 4 minus t2 by the power of 4 times in brackets phi 1 2. That was my solution for the two body problem. And there I get an additional term. And this additional term is coming in with a plus sign. And it's only due to the wall. So the wall really increases here the radiative exchange. We shall see in a second why this is the case. Now we can also discuss here the take the pointer again. What is the influence of the size of the different of the areas? Are they the same? Then this one goes away. If they are different, I need to keep them. What is the influence of the few factors? That's something that we discuss should discuss later on. I will also point to that during the questions. Now the assumptions were the walls, <coughs> the wall, sorry, this is wrong. Of course, the wall is considered. And uh, the object you already had blank, and I know t1 and t2. Now, to generalize, I have three objects. They are one, two, three, and I get this formula. And uh, you see, I get here an expression of these different uh, few factors. Again, all irradiate black. To come to the solution, I took radiative transfer between these three body. Radiation doesn't go anywhere else. The temperature of body one and two is known, and object three emits all received radiation energy, which means it behaves adiabatic. And in this case, then I get the expression here with a plus sign and the few factors that include the few factor to the uh, object three. And I only get such a simplified equation just because I assume that everything is black. So that's the contribution of the wall that increases radiative transfer here. Now with that, let's go into uh, some uh, more practical considerations for maybe your next barbecue. And uh, there are some bold statements which we will look into. The first one says, lifting the grill hardly slows down the cooking process. Uh, for the ones of you that have handled a, a kettle grill, there are uh, several uh, holes typically which serve to change the position of this grid a little bit of the kettle. And the second statement is black as color and spherical as shape are extremely unfavorable. Let me discuss the issues here and then come back to the statements. Well, here is a <coughs> simplified consideration. And what we see is there's the grilled object, there's the charcoal. And I'm just looking at this center char uh, element. Let me take the laser pointer again. And radiation then goes all over the place. And some of that hits the grill object, and a lot of that goes just to the ambience. So in terms of efficiency, this is not really the best thing to do. Now, if I would look at the side, even more would go to the ambience, and not that so much would hit the grilled object. And this means I can uh, define the fraction from where basically the charcoal can see the grilled object and where it, it's not. Uh, hitting the grill object. And uh, this is now for a short distance. If I increase the distance, the chances is larger that radiation goes by the side and does not hit the grilled object. Now let's go back to the situation here. If I assume that at the level of the charcoal, I have 100% of radiation. And I'm assuming a diameter of the circular plane there are 50 centimeters. Two centimeters above, I still have 98% of radiation. At the level the kettle or the grid is, 10 centimeters above, I have 88% of the radiation. And I would need to lift that by 27 centimeters to reach 50% of radiation. 
This means the, the foreseen means in the device are pretty useless because the little amount of height that we can gain here does not help. So that's the first thing to, to look into. Now let's have a look at the optical properties of such a grill. When we put the object to the side, it's, there's even more radiation here. Take a, so there's even more radiation just escaping to the environment. Now let's move forward and uh, here is a, I come back to that, what I can do to increase the heat load to the grill object is at least to make the walls of the grill as reflective as possible so that the radiation would basically just come back here. Same thing here. And that is, uh, I will show you uh, th this grill in a modified version where this sweet spot where we have the maximum radiation that's about 36 percent of the area is nicely used and the first thing uh, that can be done to improve such a grill is we make the walls more reflective and of course here by means of stuff that we have in a household it would be an aluminum foil the second thing that you can notice here is that uh, the grill the grill object is covering the entire opening. This means no radiation now is lost anymore. It hits the wall, gets reflected, but can't pass by the grill object to reach the ambience. So there we would make 100% use of what's coming from the charcoal. And uh, this means here the sweet spot is 100% of the area. The problem is now, typically grills don't do it, do it like this one. So. I would assume that no one, me included, would be able to grill with such a, a charcoal grill because we are just not used that the radiation is at any point in the, at the grill surface is, is uh, uh, as high as at another point. Typically, we are used to that radiation towards the side here uh, declines. Now, here's a realization of that. As I said, here the guys have broken this uh, round surface, they put uh, stainless steel walls in, straight walls, so that the radiation here to the wall comes back and does not, let me take this. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. So here the radiation would come back and in the original configuration, it would only go to the center. So the center is there, the sweet spot of the round or the bolt shaped grill, whereas with the straight walls, I have everywhere the max amount of radiation. Let me go back and to take the laser pointer again. So the discussion of the assumption that we have taken is uh, look at what are the wall properties that are changing? Should it be much reflective? Should it be a black object? And uh, does the surface play a role uh, or not the shape of the surface? I think I have discussed that. And uh, I think now you can also understand these both statements. The comprehension questions that we should be able to answer now after this video is uh, why does the calculation of radiative transfer get so much more complicated when I just add another object, a third object? And uh, if I have a third object, or look at the example here with a wall, can certain objects be combined? And if so, in which case can these objects be combined? I did that with a wall. I did not consider a left or a right wall. I just said there was a wall. Think about it, have a look at this, and discuss also the area ratio and the few factors in the derived formula. Thank you for watching and listening.